Scientists claim there's geological evidence showing that the Great Sphinx of Giza in Egypt is 800,000 years old. This scientific research means we know hardly anything of our true ancient history. One of the most mysterious and enigmatic monuments on the surface of the planet is without a doubt the Great Sphinx at the Giza Plateau in Egypt. It's an ancient construction that has baffled researchers ever since its discovery and until today. No one has been able to accurately date the Sphinx since there are no written records or mentions in the past about this. And now two Ukrainian researchers have proposed a new provocative theory where the two scientists propose that the Great Sphinx of Egypt is around 800,000 years old, a revolutionary theory that is backed up by science. The study was presented at the International Conference of Geoarchaeology and Archaeomineralogy held in Sofia, Bulgaria, titled Geological Aspect of the Problem of Dating the Great Egyptian Sphinx Construction. The authors of the paper are scientists Manichev Jakeslev, Institute of Environmental Geochemistry of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, and Alexander Parkomenko, Institute of Geography at the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. The starting point of these two experts is a paradigm shift initiated by West and Shosh, a debate intended to overcome the, the orthodox view of Egyptology, referring to the possible remote origins of the Egyptian civilization, and on the other hand, on the other, physical evidence of water erosion present at the monument of the Giza Plateau. And according to Manichev and Parkomenko, the problem of dating the great Egyptian Sphinx construction is valid despite of the long-term history of its research. Geological approach in connection to other scientific natural methods permits the answer to answer the question about the relative age of the Sphinx. The conducted visual investigation of the Sphinx allowed the conclusion about the important role of water from large water bodies which partially flooded the monument with formation of wave-cut hollows on its vertical walls. The morphology of these formations has an analogy with similar such hollows formed by the sea in the coastal zones. Genetic resemblance of the compared erosion forms and the geological structure and petrographic uh, uh, composition of the sedimentary rock complexes lead to the conclusion that the decisive factor of destruction of the historic monument is wave energy rather than sand abrasion in aeolian process from the wind. Voluminous geological researcher con literature confirms the fact of existence of long-living freshwater lakes in various periods of the Quaternary from the lower Pleistocene to the Holocene. These lakes were distributed in the territories adjacent to the Nile. The absolute mark of the upper large erosion hollow of the Sphinx corresponds to the level of water surface which took place in the early Pleistocene. The great Egyptian Sphinx had already stood on the Giza Plateau by that geological historical time. A strong argument was made by Ukrainian scientists in regions of the Sphinx in regards to the Sphinx, arguments based on geological studies which support Shasha's view regarding the Sphinx and its age. Manichev and Parkomenko focused on the deterioration aspect of the body of the Sphinx leaving aside the erosive features where the Sphinx is located, which had been studied previously by Shosh, Ukrainian scholars focused on the undulating terrain of the Sphinx, which displays the mysterious pattern. Mainstream scientists offer explanation for this sharp feature and state that it's based on the abrasive effect of the wind and sand. The undulations were formed because the harder layers of rock are better at withstanding the erosions with the softer layers uh, and uh, while the softer layers would have been more affected forming voids. However, as noted by Manischev and Parkomenko, this argument does not explain why the front of the head of the Sphinx lacks such features in regards to the argument made by Sosh about the heavy rain period which occurred around 13,000 years ago, well 15,000 years ago, they occurred 13,000 BC. The Ukrainian scientists recognized Sosha's hypothesis, 
partially suggesting that the erosive features of the Sphinx go further back than 13,000 BC. Manichev and Parkomenko argued that this, that the, that the mountainous coastal areas of the Caucasus and Crimea, which they know well, have a type of wind erosion that differs morphologically to the erosion features noted on the Sphinx. Essentially, they argue that such wind erosion has a very soft effect regardless of the geological composition of the rocks. In our geological field expeditions in different mountains and littoral zones of the Crimea and Caucasus, we could often observe the form of Aeolian weathering, which morphology differs considerably for weathering taking place on the GES. Most natural forms of weathering are of smoothing, smooth character, independent of lithological composition of the rocks. And they continue further and they explain our personal experience in scientific investigation of geology of the seacoast gives reason to draw an analogy with the GES and to suggest another mechanism of its destruction. Specialists and geologists who look in the field of seacoast geomorphology no such forms of relief as wave cut hollows. They can be one and multiple storied. They are arranged horizontally to the seawater surface. If the coast makes a vertical wall, a cliff, especially deep wave cut hollows are formed in precipitous cliffs built by the strata are carbonaceous rocks. Such forms of the coast relief are well known and studied in detail on the Black Sea coast of the Caucasus and Crimea. General model of formation of wave cut hollows in the rocks of the Caucasian uh, fly, flish is given by Popov. In dynamics of the process of wave cut hollows formation, one can notice such a characteristic feature that the wave energy is directed to the rock stratum at the level of water surface. Besides, both saline and fresh water can dissolve the rocks. Manichev and Parkomenko propose a new natural mechanism that may explain the undulation and mysterious features of the Sphinx. This mechanism is the impact of waves on the rocks of the coast. Basically, this could produce, in a period of thousands of years, the formation of one or more layers of ripples, a fact that is clearly visible, for example, on the shores of the Black Sea. This process, which acts horizontally, that is, when the waves hit the rocks up to the surface, Will produce a wear or dissolution of the rock. The fact that the observations of these cavities in the Great Finks made the Ukrainian scientists think that this great monument could have been affected by above said process in the context of immersion in the large bodies of water, not the regular flooding of the, of the Nile. Manichev and Parkomenko suggest that the geological composition of the body of the Sphinx is a sequence of layers composed of limestone with small interlayers of clay. Manichev and Parkomento explain that these rocks possess different degrees of resistance to the water effect and say that if the hollows formations were due to sand abrasion only, the hollows had to correspond to the strata of a certain lithological composition. They suggest that the Great Sphinx hollows are formed in fact within several strata or occupy some part of the stratum of homogeneous composition. And they firmly believe that the Sphinx had to be submerged for a long time underwater. And support this hypothesis, they point towards the existing literature of geological studies of the Giza Plateau. According to the studies at the end of the Pleistocene geologic period, between 5.2 and 1.6 million years ago, seawater entered the Nile Valley and gradually created flooding in the area. This led to formation of lacustrine deposits, which are at the mark of 180 meters above the present level of the Mediterranean Sea. That's about, what, 600 feet above the Mediterranean Sea. And according to Manichev and Parkomenko, it's the sea level during the Calabrian phase, phase, which is the closest to the present mark, with the highest GES hollow at, the, at its level. High level of seawater also caused the Nile overflowing and created long-living water bodies, as to time, it corresponds to 800,000 years, they said. What we have here is evidence which contradicts the conventional history theory of deterioration caused by sand and water, a theory already criticized by West and Soch, who recalled that during many centuries, 
So the body of the Sphinx was buried by the sands of the desert. So wind and sand erosion would not have done any damage to the enigmatic Sphinx. However, where such clearly draw, saw the action of streams of water caused by continuous rains, Ukrainian geologists see the effect of erosion caused by the direct contact of the waters of the lakes formed in the Pleistocene on the body of the Sphinx. This means that the Great Sphinx of Egypt is one of the oldest monuments on the surface of the earth, pushing back drastically the origin of mankind and civilization. Some might say that the theory proposed by Manishev and Parkomenko is very extreme because it places the Great Sphinx in an era where there were no humans according to currently accepted evolutionary patterns. Furthermore, as has been demonstrated, the two megalithic temples located adjacent to the Great Sphinx were built by the same stone, which means that the new dating of the Sphinx drags these monuments with the Great Sphinx back 800,000 years. We're talking about the pyramids. In other words, this means that ancient civilizations inhabited our planet much longer than mainstream scientists are willing to expect, accept. This is on Collective Spark. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.